Good morning, my brothers and sisters, Friendship Baptist Church family, and uh, those who uh, listen from other congregations. Praise God. This is uh, Spring Ahead Sunday. So the time is about 8 o'clock, 8.01. If you got any other time, you need to adjust it. Praise God. So here we are in the Gospel of John, chapter 19. And let me just uh, start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this another day, another opportunity to fellowship through your word. And uh, we pray that, Father, those who are listening, you'd give them a heart to receive and ears to hear. And so that as we are looking at the scriptures, that we will be transformed, being renewed in the spirit of our minds. Thank you, Father. Work your magnificent glory in us, and may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, chapter 19, uh, the Bible says in chapter 19, verse 1, So then, because Pilate was trying to release Jesus Christ, he did not want to crucify Christ. 19.1, so then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. Praise God. Praise God. He's trying to get away from this stuff. Remember his wife had told him, and another gospel said, have nothing to do uh, with this man. And so Pilate was trying to wash his hands of the whole matter. He didn't want to get involved. Matter of fact, in John chapter 18, verse 38, this is the first time recorded in scripture, Pilate said to him, what is truth? What is truth? Uh, so he's looking at it. Yeah, I got you. I know what tr truth is, but what difference does it make? And he went on to say uh, that, uh, he said to, to the Jews after that, he said, I find no fault in him at all. Find no fault in him at all. And, but he says, you have a custom in verse 39. He was hoping that they would say, release Jesus. But in verse 40, they said, release Barabbas. Barabbas was a robber. Be careful what kind of decisions that you and I make. And so in, in uh, today in John chapter 19, verse 1, so Pilate's going to have him beaten and scourged, that's whipped, and have him whipped with a, with a whip that had fragments of bones and sharp-edged uh, material so that it would, it would pull the skin off of him as the uh, whip was wrapping around his body. So Pilate went on to do this, hoping that the uh, Jews would say, okay, that's enough. But let me read a scripture to you from Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Because we're looking at, uh, and we start in these first few verses, I want you to know that we make decisions and we try to get things done, but it's the availability or the power in us to do all those things is not there. We are subject to things outside of us. So Jeremiah 10, 23, the Bible says, I know, Lord, that a man's way of life is not his own. No one who walks determines his own steps. That's Jeremiah 10, 23. The context is God was going to bring judgment on the nation and so Jeremiah had been preaching. Nobody was listening and believing. And then he understands from God's perspective, God is saying, this is what I am going to do. Jeremiah's response is, I know, Lord, that a man's way of life is not his own. No one who walks determines his own steps. That's a fact of life. So when we talk about uh, free will or have, you know this, these kind of things, the thing that we have to understand is that our wills are not what make the final decision. What makes the final decisions uh, is depending upon our circumstances. 
So Jesus said in John chapter 8, he says, when the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. But before that, Jesus says that if you're practicing sin, you're in bondage to sin. So we're not free when we're in bondage to sin. Now we're going to notice some things that look what's happening in, in Pilate's life because he wants to release Jesus. Now look at this verse nine, uh, chapter 19, verse two. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a, ro a purple robe. The Bible says in John 19, three, then they said, hail king of the Jews. And they struck him with their hands. 19.4, and Pilate then went out again and said to them, behold, I am bringing him out to you. I'm bringing him to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. You got that? I find no fault in him. That's the second time. I find no fault in him. Bible says in the very next verse, 19.5, then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. See, he was thinking that after he scourged him, the man was beaten. He has on this uh, crown of thorns is twisted. He's bleeding. He, he looks like a defeated, bleeding uh, person. And, the, and Pilate figures, oh, maybe this will be enough. Take a good look. Behold, take a good look at the man. My brothers and sisters, here's the statement I want to make to you uh, at this time. A pitiful, beaten Lord Jesus Christ does not win converts. See, often we try to present Jesus as pitiful. Oh, you know, do you see what he went through? One of the things about the passion years ago uh, when Mel Brooks, no, not Mel Brooks, but uh, I can't think of his name right now, but when we had the passion, the passion of the Christ, and the people were looking at this and what was going on is, oh, he suffered so much. I'm, I'm not denying any of that. I'm not belittling any of that. But those things don't bring about converts. What brings about converts is the Holy Spirit taking the gospel message and bringing people from spiritual death to spiritual life. Yes, our Lord suffered. He suffered greatly, more than I could even imagine. But other people had suffered that way. The things that other people who had died on the cross had not suffered was that Jesus, our Lord, became sin. The one who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Jesus legally became the sin offering. And the Father poured his wrath out on Jesus. That is not what happens when, when normal people die. Only for our Lord Jesus Christ. He endured that for us. Praise God. So Pilate is hoping to appease some of their hatred and anger. But uh, that didn't do it. So in 19.6, uh, the, the Gospel of John, Therefore when the chief priests and officers saw him, Oh, they took a good look at him, all right. You see, Pilate says, behold, take a good look at the man. The Bible says they did. And what did they say? Crucify. Crucify him. Pilate says to them in 19.6, you take him and crucify him. For I, I find no fault in him. That's the third time Pilate says that. Everything is established by two or three witnesses. Pilate establishes the fact, I don't want to have anything to do with this. But what is going on, he, uh, Jesus is going to be crucified, whether Pilate wants to or not. And the Bible says, the Jews, in, uh, the Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Now, again, remember that in the Gospel of John, that happens a number of times. John 8, 24, 8, 58, John chapter 5, when Jesus said that the father was his own, uh, that he was the son of his own father, and they took up stones to throw at him. I think four times in the gospel, they took up thrones to, stow it, to took up stones to throw at him because 
Jesus had made it known that he was the son of God or God the son. He was God in human flesh. And so this obvious from the gospel of John, Jesus is more than just some great teacher or some good man or someone who had a good idea. He is God who laid down his life for us. And so the Bible says uh, in John 19, 8, now notice, and here's the key to what's going on in Pilate's mind. Remember, it's not in human beings to direct the steps. It's, it's not in uh, human beings who walk to order their own steps and say, I'm going to do this. Remember what, what James says, James uh, in, the, in his little letter, James says, you shouldn't be saying, well, this year I'm going to do this. Next year I'm going to do this. You need to say, if the Lord is willing, all that other stuff is sin. You don't have the power to say what you're going to do next year. You know, and I, and I always say that, uh, and people would ask me sometimes, why you always say Lord willing? Because if it's not the Lord's will, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And, you know, I love to go on vacation and I love to cruise. And uh, I prayed about that thing and, and the Lord has made it available. I've been on 11 or 12 cruises. I love it. But every, every year I say Lord willing. And uh, last year I planned to be on another cruise, but COVID stopped all that. It's not in me to direct my steps. I, I'm subject to God Almighty who was in control. And he was in control in Jeremiah's day. He's in control in our Lord Jesus's day. He's in control today. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So notice in 19.8, and we're going to see what's going on in Pilate's life. Pilate, Pilate wants to after conferring with his wife, he wants to let Jesus go. Are you still with me? He doesn't want Jesus crucified. But in 19.8, therefore, when Pilate heard that saying, when he heard the Jews says uh, that Jesus made himself the son of God, Pilate realized this is going to have an unfavorable impact on his life if he doesn't do something because he doesn't want trouble from Rome. He doesn't want his leaders to be dealing with this situation. There's a man saying he's the, he's the king of the Jews. What does that mean? Uh, is he going to release the Jews? Is he going to fight? What's going on here? Uh, and so rather than Pilate answer these questions, the Bible says, therefore, when Pilate heard that, he was the more afraid. See, Pilate was already afraid. He was afraid and, you know, Pilate was a person that used to play with the Jews. When you read it, read the history, he would he would play with them. He he had control. He loved to uh, to uh, to uh, make foolish uh, gestures at gestures at them. He loved to play sport with them. Uh, he loved to put them in situations where he showed he's the king, he's the ruler, he's Pilate, he's the governor, he's the man. And so this time. The Jews are turning the tables on him. And uh, what they're doing is they know that he doesn't want Rome to be finding out about someone who's claiming to be the king of the Jews. And Pilate's not going to do anything about this. So he is the more afraid. Verse 9, and went again into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Now, now he's frustrated. You see, he, he's, he's getting no answer. He wants to release Jesus. Verse 10 says, Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? To me? You're not speaking to me? Do you not know I, I have power to crucify you or to release you? Verse 11, 1911, Jesus uh, answered, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Isn't that interesting? The one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. There are degrees of sin. Now, the Bible tells us if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world, that when you stand before 
our Lord Jesus Christ and your judge that you will be cast into the lake of fire, eternal separation from God forever. So if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, you are not going to heaven. You are not at all going to heaven. You are rejecting Jesus Christ. But there are degrees of sin. Jesus says, the one who delivered me has the greater sin. So just like in heaven, all of us who have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are going to be with the Lord forever, in eternity forever. We're going to be with him. There are also rewards given to us as we live our Christian lives. Those who have lived lives and they've never received Jesus Christ are going to be separated from Christ throughout all eternity and there will be degrees of punishment. And so we say to you, you gotta make you you know, you gotta accept Jesus. John one twelve, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? John one eleven says he came into his own and his own received him. They rejected him. Today, if you're listening, if you're hearing, either you have rejected Jesus or you have rewelcomed him and received him wholeheartedly into your life. If you haven't wholeheartedly received, surrendered, and trust the gospel, you are rejecting him. Jesus came to deliver us from our sins. Matthew one twenty one. That's why we call him Jesus. He came to save his people from their sins. And so Jesus tells them again in verse 11, Power, here's where the true power is. You may think you have power on earth, but you have no power except it's given from above. You can say that today by way of application. It's not only true of um, Pilate, it's true of all leaders, national leaders, state leaders, uh, local leaders, that they have received power. They have been has been given to them to be leaders. And as Romans chapter 13 says, now most people, just like Pilate, Pilate says, don't you know I have power? I got power from Rome. No, you could have no power if it weren't given to you. And I would say, and I've said to, to local officials and the state officials, you got to answer to God for how you, for how you performed in office. And when you bring up stuff that's contrary to the will and the word of God, you got to answer for that. Just so, and so you you put yourself in situations where now notice what Pilate said. Jesus says you have sinned. Oh, you sin, Pilate. You sin because you know the truth, and you still are not going to release me. You sin, but the ones who delivered me to you have the greater sin. Are you with me? Amen. Sin is going to be dealt with. It's going to, sin has to be dealt with. Thank God for you and me who know Jesus. Sin was dealt with in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stain. And, it, and, uh, you know, and to Jesus Christ, we owe, we owe him everything. We owe him. Jesus paid it all. And if, he, and if Jesus didn't pay it for you, you got to pay it for yourself. That's why it's all, that's why it's eternal. Because your sins are against an eternal being. And to sin against an eternal being and have to pay, you have to pay eternally. Bible goes on to say in verse 12, John 19, 12, from then on, Pilate sought to release him. You see that? He sought. He find, I find no fault in you. Three times he says that. Three times. I find no fault in you. Verse 12, he sought to release him. It's not in Pilate who walks to direct his steps. He can't do this because situations play havoc in our lives. And his fear of losing his position won't allow him to do what he wants to do. 
That's every human being. Every human being is subject to situations, circumstances under which he has no control. And so Pilate sought to release in verse 12. But the Jews cried out saying, notice, remember, he's already afraid. He's more afraid. The Bible says, if you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. Now you see where Pilate is? Pilate recognizes if they say this to Rome, I'm in trouble. I find no fault in him, but I'm making a decision here. I, um, you know, if it's, if it's between me being in trouble and Jesus being in trouble, well, Jesus is on you because I'm not, I'm not facing this. Verse 13. Uh, the Gospel of John 19, 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the pavement seat in a place that's called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha, Gabbatha, verse 14. Now it was, a, it was the preparation day of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, behold your king. He's still hoping that they'll change their mind. And someone said this about Pilate. Pilate loved to put people in situations where as the governor, he could play with the people in these situations, but the tables have been turned and now the people are playing with him. You play with situations and you think you can get away with stuff, but after a while, situations begin to play with you. Be sure your sin will find you out. And so he has sin because he's not doing what he knows he should be doing. The Bible says this uh, about these kind of situations. See, it was the preparation day. It's about uh, six, six hour. Okay, the sixth hour is 12 o'clock noon. And he says, behold, your king, still hoping that things might change. But the Bible says in Proverbs 19 and 21, there are many plans in a man's heart. You got that? Many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. Nevertheless, the, you can make all kinds of plans, programs, preparations. You can do all kinds of things. But understand this, the Lord's counsel will stand. And this was the Lord's counsel that Jesus was going to be crucified. So, if the Lord Jesus Christ was turned back over to the Jews and they stoned him, scripture would not be fulfilled. Scripture is going to be fulfilled. Pilate is not a robot. Pilate is not made to do this. He's doing this out of his own heart. He's, he's fearful. Fearful is moving him to do what he doesn't want to do, and he's trying to do something different. You see what I'm saying? We thought, as human beings, we are in bondage to sin because we practice sins. We don't really have what's called free will. Only God is free because God will make a choice. He says Christ is going to be crucified. Nothing in heaven and earth can change that. He's free when he makes that decision to cause that to happen. We make a decision and we are not free to make it happen. And so we are praying and asking God to work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God alone has free will. We are dependent upon circumstances. So in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 15, notice, uh, here's their answer. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Bible says in 1916, then he delivered him, that's Jesus, to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. So in verse 18, the Bible says, what happened there? Where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Thus, scripture has been fulfilled. 
And what I want you to show you in these first verses, these 18 verses, is that the man in charge is not in charge of situations. We're not in charge of situations. We make decisions. There are, there are choices that we make, and when things, things change, we make different choices. It's the, it's the heart of man. This brother was so afraid of his situation and he didn't want to deal with Rome, so he's willing to crucify, to send Jesus to be crucified, although he's seeking that it won't happen. That happens in our lives, my brothers and sisters. We're not in absolute control. We're not God. We're not in control of situations. And that's why we say, Lord willing. Say, I plan to do, well, Lord willing, I'll do this. Lord willing, because I don't have the, oper I don't have the uh, power to be able to make these things come off. So if someone says, hey, you, you be at the, this, this place or this place next week, I plan to, Lord willing, I'm not in control. Bible says in Acts chapter 2, 22 through 24, let me read these scriptures to you. It says, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. In other words, they knew that Jesus Christ was, uh, that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah. He was attested by God the Father. They knew that. Verse uh, 23, Acts 2, 23. It says, Jesus, him being delivered, notice, by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. God had determined and foreknew in eternity past, this was what was going to happen and this was how it's going to happen. But the Bible says, uh, in the rest of that uh, verse, Acts 2.23, you have taken by lawless hands, you have crucified and put Jesus to death. Verse 24, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Praise the Lord. That's an, that's an awesome thought. Listen, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Whatever God promises, whatever he says is absolutely true and it will come to pass. One day to soon the rapture of the church is going to take place. It will happen because uh, our Lord Jesus Christ has said it. He told his disciples he was going away, but he said, I'll come back and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you will be with me forever. Praise the Lord. He says, I go away to prepare a place for you. The, and so every word of God is pure, it's accurate, it's purposed, it's determined, and it will come to pass. That's why we can be steadfast and immovable, uh, unmovable. Because the word of the Lord is a certain sure thing. The, the apostle Peter, who had seen such great things in his, uh, in his letter, he says this. He says, yeah, I've, I saw Jan, uh, Lord Jesus Christ. I saw Jesus transfigured. I, he walked on water. I jumped out and he says I could walk with him. He fed 5,000. You know, he did all these miracles. Uh, he raised Lazarus from the dead. He says, but when I look at those things and I compare those things to the word of God, those miracles that we saw prove who, who he is. Those are great and astounding, awesome things. But greater than that is we have a sure word of prophecy. That, and so when we look at that, my brothers and sisters, I'm trying to help you understand that uh, we can trust God. We can trust him in his word. We can trust him. We can trust him. Praise the Lord. And so it says, you have taken by lawless hands, wicked hands. Now that's why God can be, can purpose and determine things. And the people who commit the heinous acts are guilty before God because they did it by lawless hands. Uh, what they would, what they did was murder. It was wrong, and so it wasn't because 
they were predetermined, it was because they were lawless. So God's, God's purpose does not take away from our human responsibility. So I look and I say, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world, according to, to uh, Revelations 13, 8, Revelations 17, 8. That's where I look. I'm in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise God. I'm saved eternally. There's no doubt about that. Hallelujah. I'm going to heaven to be with my Lord and Savior. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. It's just a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an, I'm an heir of salvation, a purchase of God. I'm born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is your story and my story if you know him. This is our story. Praise the Lord. It's a genuine story. It's absolutely true because remember Jesus says in John chapter 6, the words that I speak to you, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. He says, listen, uh, the flesh profits nothing but his words. He says, heaven and earth are going to pass away, but not my words. You talk about the comfort, the joy, the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. And again, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I don't know uh, what's good, what happens tomorrow, but I sure know who's in control of tomorrow. And I know that my future is planned, it's purpose, and it will come to pass. I have been saved, you and I as believers, with a holy calling. And, and we're saved uh, with, by his own purpose and grace that's given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so on this uh, spring ahead Sunday, I'm looking forward to one day I'm going to spring out of here. <laughs> I'm going to be gone. You know what we say in church? One of these mornings won't be long. You're going to look for me and I'll be gone. Be going all my way to heaven to sing and shout. Nobody there to put me out. Praise his holy name. We're going, to spring, uh, we're going to spring ahead one day from time into eternity. I'm looking forward to that day. So here's what the Bible says in John 19 and 19. Now, Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing, let me see where I am here. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Now, get this. That's what he wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The very next verse, then many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, okay? Therefore, the chief priests, these are Sadducees, the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews. Do not write the king of the Jews. But he said, Here's what I want you to write. He said, I am the king of the Jews. So Pilate's no longer moved by fear because the Jesus is crucified. No matter what they, they say, then all Pilate has to say, yeah, uh, that whatever he said, what did I do? I crucified him. So he's no longer moved by fear. And his response in verse 22 is this. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. <laughs> I've written. He's no longer moved by fear because he's no longer afraid since he's crucified Jesus. He's no longer concerned about Rome anymore. So he's not going to put up with any, any mess from the religious leaders that he was dealing with because he's okay in himself. Verse 23 says, Then the soldiers, when they crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier apart, and also the tunic. Now the piece was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. So I'm going to stop here on this, uh, this Sunday morning. And uh, when we look at what is going on, we, we're dealing with the situation with Pilate to help us understand we don't control anything. Amen. Just like we don't, we don't control whether it's going to be rain or sunshine, 
Uh, you know, we don't control the temperature. We don't control anything. We're subject to these things in our lives. We can make plans. And yet the Bible says this. It says the plans and purposes of God that will stand. Praise his holy name. So continue to trust in him because our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. So we're going to start by there where Pilate was no longer moved by fear. And he says, what I have written, I have written. I'm not changing a thing. Get out of my face. I've done what, what, what needed to be done. Praise the Lord. Praise God who doesn't have to change his situation or change his word for anything. He's in control of every situation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your for this time that we have in the word this morning. We want your name to be blessed. And may we continue to grow in, in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Have your way and bring glory to yourself. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day, everybody. Praise God.